My brothers and sisters, I'm honored to be with you this morning. I pray that the Lord will bless me. I have a, <clears throat> my eyes aren't what they used to be. I went and saw the eye doctor and I said, I, I can't see the teleprompter. And he said, well, your eyes are old and they're not gonna change, so I'll do the best I can. I'd like to share with you some things that have been in my mind. I have seemed, seemed to have the prophet Joseph in my mind the last few, uh, few months. I have even, <clears throat> when I've sat and contemplated his divine, and not divine, but his glorious responsibility and becoming the prophet of this, the dispensation of the fullness of times. I think how grateful we are as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, of Latter-day Saints, that Joseph Smith, a boy, who desired to know what he needed to do to have his sins forgiven and found the courage <clears throat> to go into a grove of trees near his home in Palmyra, New York, and there to kneel in prayer and by his own statement to pray out loud for the first time. On that occasion, as Joseph on his knees in the, what we call the sacred grove, the heavens opened. Two personages, brighter than the noonday sun, appeared before him. One spoke to him and said, Joseph, this is my beloved son. Hear him. And thus began the restoration of the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. As Jesus, our Savior and our Redeemer, spoke to the boy Joseph and opened up this dispensation of time that we now live in. We sing the song, Praise to the Man Who Communed with Jehovah. Joseph Smith, we thank the Lord for Joseph Smith and for his courage to go into that grove of trees in 1820 near his home in Palmyra, New York. And I've been thinking about just all of the marvelous things, brothers and sisters, that we know, and all the things that we have, the understanding of the purpose of life, who we are. We know who God is. We know who the Savior is, because we have Joseph, who went into a grove of trees as a boy, seeking really the forgiveness for his sins. I think it's one of the most glorious and wonderful things that anybody in this world can know that our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ 
have revealed themselves in this latter day and that Joseph has been raised up to restore the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters, my testimony to you this morning is how abundantly blessed we are to know all that we know because we have Joseph Smith, the prophet of this last dispensation, dispensation of time. We have the Book of Mormon. What a marvelous, wonderful gift the Book of Mormon is to the membership of the church. Another witness, another testament that Jesus is the Christ. We have it because Joseph was worthy to go get the plates, was inspired by heaven to translate them by the gift and power of God and to give it to the world another testament that Jesus is the Christ. So well, my message this morning is simple. It's deep and it's full of love. For the prophet Joseph Smith and for all of those, my brothers and sisters, who have and were willing to sustain him in his youth, I would like to pay tribute this morning to his mother. I've always thought how wonderful it was that Lucy Mack Smith, when Joseph came from that experience in the sacred grove and told his mother what had happened, that she believed him. I'm grateful for his father and his brothers and his sisters and his family that sustained him in the this tremendous responsibility that the Lord placed upon him to become the prophet, to restore the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ once again upon the earth. So my testimony this morning is that I know that Jesus Christ is the Savior and Redeemer of the world. I also know that our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ appeared and spoke to Joseph and prepared him to become the prophet to restore the fullness of the everlasting gospel once again upon the earth. I marvel, and I'm sure that many of you do too, at how blessed we are to know what we know about our purpose in life, why we are here, what we should be trying to do and accomplish in our daily lives. We're in the process of trying to prepare ourselves a day at a time to be a little better, be a little kinder, be a little more prepared for that day when it will surely come, when we shall pass back into the presence of our 
Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's getting a little closer for me. I'll soon be 95. My children tell me they think I'm a lot older than that some days, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> the best I can. But in 50 years, brothers and sisters, I've had the privilege to cover the world in my assignment as a general authority of the church. It's been a wonderful blessing. There's almost, I think, almost all the parts of the world I've, I've got pretty close to. I've met with members of the, of the church all over the world. Oh, how I love you. What a glorious experience that's been to look into your faces, be in your presence and feel your love that you have for the Lord and for the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May our Heavenly Father watch over us now and bless all the proceedings of the conference. May we have the Spirit of the Lord well up in our hearts. And may our love for the gospel of Jesus Christ and our beloved Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, increase. And our commitment to serve Him and to strive to keep His commandments and try to be more like Him be a result of our attending General Conference. So wherever you are in this world, may God bless you. May the Spirit of the Lord be with us. May we feel the power of heaven as we worship together in this session of conference. I leave you my witness and testimony that I know that Jesus is the Christ. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. He is our best friend in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.